It's time you got the rest you need. Find out how today on Fixing the Money Thing. There is a way for you to have the Sabbath rest, which means you should have more than enough. See, you're not to live in this survival mentality trying to survive. This is not, this is not your inheritance. This is not your destiny. Who would not be able to win if they had the answers before the test? You don't beg for something you already have. Understand this, this is vital. You are a citizen of a kingdom. You have legal rights. So stop your begging, stop your whining. It's based on law. He has given you the kingdom. Join financial expert Gary Cassie from his recent Your Financial Revolution Conference at Faith Life Church. One of Gary's most inspired teachings coming up on today's Fixing the Money Thing. Now let's let this sink in for a minute. The church is not teaching people how the double portion operates or that the Sabbath rest is available today. And so Christians are not even anticipating that. They don't know how to prosper. They don't know how to tap into that reality so that they're to have that excess. Would you agree? There is a way for you to have the Sabbath rest, which means you should have more than enough. Even Paul says that in 2 Corinthians 9, that you'll be able to be generous on every occasion. See, you're not to live in this survival mentality trying to survive. This is not, this is not your inheritance. This is not your destiny. You are to live a supernatural gathering lifestyle of opportunities, favor, wisdom, and opportunities that come up to you, and you gather from them while you're on assignment. And so we need to understand that your job, whatever you have, your business, you need to change mentality. That is not your confidence. God has you there on assignment. So we need to understand that too. Now, let's dig into this a little bit deeper. So we understand what the Sabbath rest is, right? You have to have a double portion to have it, correct? Everyone got that part. All right, so therefore there remains a Sabbath rest. The people of God tells you the reality is that you're to live in that abundant lifestyle because Jesus has delivered you out of that curse, out of that survival, painful toil and sweat. He's restored to you the kingdom of God. And uh, even though you live in the earth realm, he supernaturally is going to uh, bless your harvest as he did them. All right, so Jesus, when he came into his ministry, the first thing he did after he was baptized at the River Jordan with John there is he went back into his hometown of Nazareth, Luke chapter 4, verse 16. So he went back to Nazareth, it says, where he'd been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Well, come on, what is good news to the poor? I've heard people say, well, that's just talking about being poor in spirit and being born again. No, this is, this is it's talking to people that need money. Okay, it's not that complicated. He sent me to proclaim freedom. Now listen to this. To proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Now, you'll catch the verbiage here. It sounds very familiar, what we just covered, doesn't it? Good news to the poor. More than enough. Prisoners are being released. Captives are being released. Recovery of sight to the blind. Set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So he's been anointed to proclaim good news to the poor. All debts forgiven, got your land back, got your prosperity back. He's proclaiming good news to the poor, the year of God's favor, which is the year of Jubilee. Then he rolled the scroll up, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What is he saying? He is saying, I am the Jubilee. 
the reality has come. The reality has come. The reality has come. I am the Jubilee. I am the Sabbath. He is the Sabbath. You live in the Sabbath. The Sabbath is no longer a day, friend. It, you live in Christ. You live in the reality. The Sabbath day was a shadow. The Sabbath year was a shadow. The Jubilee was a shadow. You live in the reality of the seventh day. Jesus said, I am he. And that's why they tried to kill him. They tried to kill him right then. Now, I'm going to come back to this, but he didn't finish Isaiah 61, verse 2. He stopped halfway through the verse. He was making the point, I am he. Now, the double portion. Like you, probably, I've heard of the double portion for many years, but I, didn't, I had no clue really how it worked. You know, just, you know, we've heard the term double portion. You know, it's, it's written in the scriptures, double portion. But I had no understanding of it, really. I just knew of it, you know. And uh, God had to teach me. And I'm telling you these, I'm going to tell you some stories because you've got to understand when God corrected Moses, he wanted them to have this reality. He was not happy with them out there on the Sabbath day trying to painful toil and sweat. And I believe he's not happy with the church doing it, not understanding what they have. And uh, he wanted to make very, very sure that I understood it and I was to proclaim it. I'm a real estate agent. Um, I sell houses for a living. I've been doing it for 19 years. Um, you know, it was great in the beginning. Uh, was pulling in some money, but spending it as fast as it was coming in. So during the recession of 08, we survived it, but we were not thriving whatsoever. And it about wiped our business out because we had, we had no idea our rights of the kingdom. We didn't know the laws. We didn't know anything biblically about how finances should look in the kingdom. We grew up in two very different households and two very different denominations but neither of which taught us anything about finances, especially biblical finances. What I remember most is um, I had a deal fall apart last minute, um, getting ready to close it at the table, and it just fell apart. And we were out of money. We didn't have any money left. How were we gonna pay our bills? We didn't know how. Um, and it, me, being the provider of the house, got to go work. I got to do something. I got to bring in some type of money. It was panic mode for us. Um, it was fighting. Yep, fighting. It striving. was striving. Yep, just trying to it get was through. Chaos. Yep, scratching at every corner we could, trying to come up with two dimes so we could <laughs> so we could pay our mortgage and stuff. Yeah. And and it was that mentality of because sometimes when you roller coaster your whole life um, and you don't have that stability that you just, you make really, really bad decisions. So we were making bad decisions with definitely how we were spending money, taking out credit cards, getting cars that we couldn't afford, getting everything that we couldn't afford. Yep. And I think it was just to satisfy a deeper need that we had, yep. which was ultimately needing Jesus to be first and foremost. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we went to church. It wasn't that we didn't have God, but I guess we just didn't, know some of the teachings that God had for us until we started listening. So when we started coming to Faith Life Church about four years ago, um, we had never been taught anything like we've been taught here, and it changed everything for us. Our middle daughter had been through some health problems, and she is completely healed and whole. We learned our authority and that we could take that and that healing was ours, but we did not realize that we could apply that to our business. One of the first series that we really dug into was Pastor Gary's Power of Rest series. And that is what completely changed everything for us, for our business, for our marriage, for our finances, um, for everything. The main things that just captivated me from that series was we always hear that the Sabbath is Sunday, the Sabbath is Sunday, and learning that the Sabbath is 24 seven. It's a way of living. It is living in God's rest because he's already provided and that the Sabbath is a person and the Sabbath is Jesus. And I love the scripture in Matthew of Jesus talking about like, look at the birds. They aren't striving and painful toil and sweat 
you know, over what they're gonna eat and drink yeah. and all of this, like, will I not take care of you so much more? And that just really, that really hit home that I've been the one causing myself all of the stress. We started asking ourselves, what can we do different in our business? How can we be set apart? Because everybody knows a realtor yep. or 10 of them. So yep. we really started asking God, what can we do different? Like the fragments that the power of rest talks about, like where are those fragments? What can we do different? And it really was just applying the kingdom and the promises to our business. He just started teaching us about the power of rest, the double portions, the overflow and everything just started coming together. That deal fell apart. Next thing I know, um, I put it back on the market. I got a call uh, that people wanted to see it. I took them through it, ended up representing them. So I got the double portions because I represented both sides of the deal. And then the overflow was getting to list their house they had to sell in order to buy this one. So the paycheck that was gonna be $9,000 turned into $24,000 within a couple of weeks. He's blessed plenty of my clients. Appraisals came in $100,000 over. Um, so not only is he blessing me, he's blessing my clients, which is blessing our business. Yeah, and during the market where there's multiple offers and people are paying sometimes 30, 40, 50,000 over list price, our clients, they're walking into 50, 50 to $100,000 $100, in equity, which is just completely unheard of yep. during these times. When the realtor personally called him, instead of just putting it on the market, getting multiple offers, going through that whole process again, she called him and said, you know, I wanna offer this to your people first. And what she said was, there was just something about you and I, you and your clients, and I just wanted to make sure that they were able to get the first offer in. About two months before the COVID-19 hit, the Lord had brought a scripture back to my mind and he just kept telling me to speak, no weapon formed against you will prosper. So I started speaking, no weapon formed against me will prosper. No weapon formed against my husband will prosper. No weapon formed against our marriage, our business, our kids, our property. And I just kept, I couldn't get it out of my system. I just kept speaking it over and over and over. And I kept telling him, I'm like, something, there's a stirring in my spirit, something is happening but I'm completely at rest. Then he started bringing back the double portion reminder to us and the power of rest. I had ordered a hair dryer and they sent me two of them. And then my daughter had gotten a baby doll for Christmas and it was defective. So I had called the company and they sent me two. And then two family members actually gave us cars. So there were three instances right in a row about a month or two before the coronavirus hit that God was showing us and bringing back the power of rest. Going through 08 and all of the fear and the worry and the anxiety that we had, um, this time we just knew it was going to be different. We knew that God was taking care of us. He was providing for us. It didn't matter if there was another re recession, if the economy crashed, we knew physically that we would be fine. We knew financially spiritually, emotionally, relationally. We knew in every aspect of our lives that we were just gonna be fine. My business is essential. It keeps the economy going um, and he's really blessed us. I'm writing contracts, showing houses every day. Um, still, uh, my buyers are strong. Still sellers are wanting to get out. God, he is your provider. Yep. The job in the economy is not your provider. That's not what you need to be leaning on for your source of strength. So just dig in to the teachings, dig into the word and find the promises because they're all yes and amen. And they are, if they're for us, if he can do it for us, Correct. he can do it for you.